Hello friends, good evening. Here we come to the second episode of the webinar on understanding the OIQs part 2. In the last webinar, I spoke about the first factor covering four officer-like qualities that are effective intelligence, reasoning ability, organizing ability and the power of expression. Before I proceed, I would like to thank thousands of viewers who had the patience to listen to me and hundreds of you who sent me email appreciating the webinar and also you have made a lot of questions to me and I put my team to compile these questions into FAQs and very shortly I shall come out with short videos on each of these FAQs and uh, put it on my YouTube channel and uh, I hope that will really help the entire community, those who watched the webinar and those who could not watch the webinar. Now in this particular session, I am going to talk about factor 2, which is also called the social adjustment factor. And it covers three extremely important officer qualities, which are social adaptability, sense of responsibility and cooperation. Now before I dwell on each of these values individually, I must tell you that these qualities of factor 2 are extremely extremely important and unfortunately these qualities are known as the least trainable qualities or the poor qualities. It is because these are qualities of your conscience or these are qualities of your value system which does not get imbibed in a short period of time. It starts, you start developing these qualities right from your birth. In fact, we say that it is an outcome of nature and the nurture where the nature signifies or represents your genetics and nurture represents your early childhood upbringing and since most of you guys are adults and a few of you may be NDA as aspirants or still just about 18 years of age these qualities are already formed up in you mostly and there is very really less scope for training or it will require long years of training to correct it. Nevertheless, this is what we say and this is what we believe. But I personally in my experience of so many years, I feel that if you are conscious of your weak areas in this particular segment, if you are conscious that you know you lack something here and if you have the will to change it is possible to change and it is very possible to change as we go along i will tell you how how one should inculcate these and first thing is to understand what it means and how how to realize yourself how to introspect and realize yourself as to where you are lacking be conscious of it and make conscious effort to correct this behavior it, it is possible right so let us now come to the first OLQ of factor 2 which is called the social adaptability now what is social adaptability in a literal sense it is the candidates ability to adapt to a social environment okay See, as human beings, we are all social animals. We live in a community, we live in a society, we live in groups, right? And that's what is social. So, the ability of a person to adapt to a social group is, is what social adaptability means. Now, how, how does this get formed in you as you grow up? Genetically, there are guys, there are some guys who inherit this quality 
through hereditary, through genes, and they are shy by nature. They are very shy by nature. You will find the father or the mother in the house very shy and the son or the daughter very shy. This has come through the lineage, this has come through the hereditary. Okay? That is the part of the nature. Right? But more importantly, it is the nurture that will matter a lot. Okay? Now what is this? Who are the guys who are not able to adapt to a social group? Who believe that people are all bad? Who believe that this particular gender is not good to associate with? People who believe that this particular caste is not good to associate with? Where are they getting all this? They are getting all this from the environment. Perhaps, we don't know, they may be getting this from the very family background, right? I have seen, I have come, I have come, I have come across several examples of this and I am sure you will be able to relate to what I am saying. Okay. There, are, there are children who have been brought up with this belief that friends are all useless, do not waste time with them. There are children who are told, don't go and mix with that particular boy. There are children who are told, don't mix up with this particular community. It's very unfortunate. Perhaps it is there in our culture, it is there in our system. But what does the boy, when he is very young, what does he believe? He believes what his parents are saying. So he associates with that learning and he lives with that through his life and he believes that this particular caste, community or group of friends as general are not good people to be with. So they learn to be loners. And let me tell you, I was recently interviewing a lot of candidates for Mission NDA for the next batch that we are starting, we have started already. And I was shocked to see many of the candidates are openly saying that I am not very social, I don't have many friends because friends are wastage of time and they exploit our, our you know, they exploit us. You know, I was really shocked to hear this kind of responses. And where have they got this from? You know, perhaps within the family or the immediate environment in which they have lived. Please understand, Defense Services is a social group. And while you may party socially and you may adjust and adapt to people for, uh, for a fun kind of an environment or one time, one time academic activity or one time school activity gatherings, please understand, Forge is very different. The military is very different. You have to be together, adapt to each other, understand each other's differences and yet gel very, very well as a family, as a brother and fight together in adverse situations. So there is no place for somebody who has social adaptability issues. It's very unfortunate. And for God's sake, do not, do not believe that friends are all bad. For God's sake, do not believe that friends, uh, they exploit us and when, they, when we need them, they don't come along. These are biases that we develop. Perhaps you may have had some bad experiences in the past. But for God's sake, do not generalize this and start believing it or start making it as your core belief that all people are bad. That's not very good. And in this regard, I would advise you all to read a book on I am okay, you are okay. There are four quadrants in that. Where I believe I am okay, you are okay. This is the quadrant where you should lie. The other three quadrants are I am okay, you are not okay. Third quadrant is, I am not okay, you are okay. And the fourth quadrant, dangerous quadrant, is I am not okay, you are not okay. Okay. 
Please read that book. It's a very interesting book. And you see the personality type. And what I suggest is you should be part of the group where you feel I'm okay, you are okay. I'm okay, everybody else is okay. Does not matter if somebody is taking you know, advantage of you, somebody is asking for help and refusing to help you at times, have a larger heart. Does not mind. Ignore. But don't compete with him in the negatives. Compete with him in the positives. Just because he is being bad, you don't have to compete and be bad as, as much as he is or more than him. Then there is no difference between him and you. Have a broader perspective, have a larger heart. Now, how does this get reflected in the various tests, right? In the interview, it's very simple. If you see the first PIQ, uh, the sorry, CIQ, the comprehensive interview questionnaire, there is a question about, you know, your friend circle, number of friends you have, friends who are close to you, why do you think they are close to you, what activities you are doing together. If somebody is working, he'll ask about your colleagues, your relationship with the boss, with the family. He'll ask you where you're close to, your mother or father, why not mother, why not father. He's basically trying to see whether you are a free-flowing person. Whether you are a person who can mix with everybody, who has no biases, who respects the elders, will obey the orders. See, these are very good virtues. I know increasingly these values are decreasing in our country, in our society. But if you are a good human being, you should stick to these values because these are the right values. Right? Now, if you take the, like I said in the interview, he is going to ask you about all this. You know, I am not going to tell you, I am sure many of you must be eagerly waiting, what answer should I give you? you know, come on. I have explained to you what this is. And do not try to frame an answer to suit the interviewing officer. Please understand, he is a person with a lot of experience. And you can't just make, you know, ready-made answers and give it to him. He will catch you somewhere else. Right? But what you need to understand from here is that you need to be a person who is free-flowing, who accepts everybody. Everybody accepts you. You are a very friendly, approachable, clear-minded, clear-hearted person. In Hindi, dil ka acha hona ba jaruri hai. Right? Dil ka bhaat acha admi hai. You know, a lot of people will get attracted to you just for this quality. Right? And that is what you should try and be. Now, when you come to the psych test, obviously there are several situations, there are several words, there is a story to write. And if you are naturally the guy who do not mix well with people, who is shy, who is timid, who is an introvert, I keep getting a lot of questions on being introvert and extrovert. In fact, if you go to YouTube channel of AFPA, there is a specific video on introvert versus extrovert. And I must, you know, I recommend that you all of you go and watch that video. You will understand what I am talking about. Be an extrovert. Introvert is somebody who lives within himself, who doesn't open up, who doesn't mix with people. If you, if this is your basic nature, how are you going to inspire your jawans? How are you going to inspire your troops? How are you going to lead them into a war? Not possible. You have to be a very, very open-hearted person, freely mix everybody, accept everybody, and take them to any extent and take them to any extent I can I bet you, I can assure you if you are a good hearted person your men will die for you. Right? Similarly when you come to the GTO technique now like I said previously also and so many videos, so many interviews I have talked about this the GTO technique, the first four tasks your group discussion, your group planning exercise your uh, PGT and the group of the race and half group task and the final group task. These are all group tasks. So this is one of the things that I am seeing or any GTO is seeing. Right? How do you adapt it to the group? Do you tend to be selfish? Do you mix with people? Do you share? 
Do you give a help? You know? Or are you the kind of person who does not mix well? You stand in the corner, watch everybody do things. You are quiet, you are shy, you are timid. Not going to work. Right? I am sure many of you, I will just share this experience. Uh, I am sure many of you must have come across, uh, you know, guys like this. Unknown guys. You may be traveling in a train and suddenly there is somebody who will come and say, Hello, Ji, ki aal hai? Kaise ho? Kithe ja rahe ho? He will start talking. He will initiate a talk with you. And you will wonder, hey, Koon banda hai? Why is he talking with me? But, you know, he will be very nice to you. Right? And he may not require anything from you. He has a birth. You have a birth. He has put his luggage. You have put his luggage. You are, you know, keeping a glum, serious face. And he is all cheerful. He is, you know, talking to everybody. And suddenly the tea vendor comes. And he says, Anji, chai bhi okay? He is asking you, will you have a cup of tea? And he will offer a cup of tea. Badiya banda. Electric life. You know, he is electric wire. He is a light wire. Right? He engages with anybody and everybody very freely without any bias, without anything to expect from the others, just being very nice. He will help you. You get into trouble, you want you are getting down before him, he will help you with the luggage. He'll come and you know leave you till the gate. And for what? That's his basic nature. And I'm telling you, such guys are wonderful guys. Right? And you know, that is something that we must all try and become. All those who are shy, timid by nature, I always tell this and I tell my students, you know, be conscious of this fact that you are shy and you are timid. You don't mix up, mix around with people. Right? Does not matter. Now that you are conscious, what should you do? If you are there, if you are if you are traveling in a train, just say politely good evening. Hello, how are you? That's all. Start from there. You meet somebody, you go, go to some place, go to the library, keep a cheerful face, meet people. Hi, hello. You know, you meet your, you know, you go to a restaurant or you go to a pub for all, you know, you guys are all used to that. So meet people. Just go and say hello to them. Talk to them. Fine, doesn't matter. Okay. And make extra effort to make friends with people. When I say friends, I don't mean that you do you want to jump people or go out of the way. Just at least maintain a good cordial relationship with everybody and participate in group activities. You know, that's why I say, you know, the more the more you participate in group activities, you learn to adapt. No human being is perfect, let me tell you. If you are perfect, you would have become God. We all have our imperfections in us. So do you have. So does others have. So don't look at the imperfections. Don't look at the bad quality. Look at the strengths. Associate with their strength. And go and meet, talk and involve in activities with people. Do that consciously. Slowly you will find that you are growing bolder. Right? There are guys, like I have seen, you know, they go to a party, they stand in a corner, have a drink, they don't mix around, they can't mix around, and they quietly come back. Very bad. So, become a social animal. The term that you all are very familiar with. Become a social animal. Binda Go and talk to people. It does not matter. Kuch nahi jayega. Right? Now let us come to the second officer like quality under the factor 2 which is sense of responsibility. Right? Now, if you read the definition of this particular OAQ in my book, SSB to you, the complete guide. And beware, I just came to know today that similar looking cover page of my book is in the market with different authors. So, I am not talking about those books, I am talking about the book written by me. And if you see the definition of this particular OIQ, it is quite exhaustive. Now, what does this sense of responsibility mean? In Hindi, if I have to say this, Jimmy Dari ka ahsas, right? Now, what is your responsibility 
as a citizen of this nation, as a member of a society, as a member of the family, as a student, as a son, as an employee, all this will come under scan. Very good, they say. And how does this get formed? It again gets formed from your early childhood upbringing. Right? Now, imagine a child who has repeatedly seen his elders, his family members committing things that are unlawful. I keep giving this example very casually, right? Suppose a child is sitting behind his uncle, father, and father not wearing a helmet, okay? And the police catches him on the screen. So he will engage in a talk, and thereafter, slowly he will pass on rupees 100 to the policeman. So, what is the learning that the child gets? When you may break a rule, all you need to have is a rupee hundred note in your pocket. And as long as you have that, you are safe. That becomes the child's value system. Right? If a child has seen people, elders in the family taking pride, he believes, this is a law, it does not matter. I mean, it's very common, everybody does it. Right? All these small, small things add up to his personality and add up to his belief that these are accepted norms in the society which may not be. Particularly if you come to the SSB or the services, these are not accepted. Now, many of us, I keep seeing this every day on the street, particularly the youth. The signal is red and he will turn left, right, you will see if there are any cops standing there and if there is nobody and the road is clear, he will push off. What does it reflect? Basically, if there is no observation, if there is nobody observing you, if there is no enforcement of law, you commit crime. Right? Not acceptable to us. We want candidates who understand the difference between the right and the wrong and who will follow the right though it is very difficult to follow sometimes. That is the kind of candidates we are looking for. So obviously this value system, his beliefs should be very strong as far as the sense of responsibility comes into play. Now, how does this translate into various techniques? Obviously, you know, in the entering technique, you are a student and you have not done well in your academics. Now, there has to be a reason for this. Because as a student, your responsibility is to study well. That's all, that's what every parent says. Right? Some parents tell you, if you don't study, you will not have a better future. Whatever may be the method of faith. But as a student, when I am studying in the school, I am supposed to study well. Right? And if you are not studied well, then there has to be reason. One, that I am not very intelligent or maybe I am not gifted like that. Two, I was involved in various other co-curricular, extracurricular activities which took away a lot of time and I could not focus. Right? These are some of the possibilities. Somebody can may not have good, very good results in the exam because he had you know some problem before the exam, he was hospitalized or something went wrong in the household and he got involved in that and he could not study at that time. That could be any reason. There has to be a reason. If you have no reason and you still not say it well, fair enough. But he is also assessing your effective intelligence, you know, your intelligence per se. And if you find that he is fairly intelligent, but this guy did not study well, that's one. And then he will probe up 
I mean, Dimitri Gosal will definitely, he has his own techniques, he has his own ways of proving what are the activities he was involved in, what kind of friends he indulged in. He will open up, he will open you up and he will understand, okay, fine, he got into wrong company, he did wrong things, he was, he was in the wrong track altogether and hence his academics suffered and overall he is a, he is not a very good personality, right? That's one way of concluding things, but that's not conclusive. As far as I mean, I just mentioned a few examples, but don't take that as you know the gospel or the only thing to assess you. There are multiple ways. There are multiple questions. We will definitely probe you, well, you know, deep inside and find out what prompted you or how you indulged and what where you went in or where you went wrong or all those things. Similarly, when you Oppose the psychological tests, it will come out in various situations, in various uh, tag images, the kind of storyline that you write, the kind of actions you write, the kind of solutions you write, you will be able to gauge whether you are, you know, you adapt or you follow the social norms or not. The moment you don't follow the social norms, you know, there will be a question mark on your social a sense of responsibility because these are norms and you are breaking those norms these are the right things these are the right virtues these are the right values and you are breaking those you will get reflected in your responses right and the GTO technique is extremely extremely you know powerful in finding out these traits because at every stage in every activity there are certain rules and regulations that you need to follow. There are certain rules that you need to follow and they are explained to you. Right? But there will be a candidate, there will be many candidates who will be perpetual rule breakers. They will not adapt to the social norms. They will break the norms. They will break the rules. They will project themselves to be selfish. They will not care for whatever has been told. And it's very, very easy to spot such candidates. And me being a GTO, I can tell you, you know, this is this becomes very apparent. You don't have to do anything extraordinary to find out this. It, it, and you yourself, by your own deeds and uh, acts, you tell us that you know I don't follow the rules. And anybody who doesn't follow the rules is a misfit here in the armed forces. Is this clear? The armed forces runs based on rules, procedures, standard operating procedures and anybody who doesn't care, who breaks the rules is a misfit here. So when you know that, suppose you come to know that you have been an offender or you, you tend to break rules, be conscious about it, be conscious about it. You know there are rules where you cannot touch a red color in the little task. It is explained to you. Time and again it is explained. Right? In the PGT it is good. In the GOR it is good. In the half group task, the same rules are applicable. Command task, the same rules are applicable. The final group task, the same. The IO is, is applicable. But the guy doesn't follow that. He breaks that rule. He will go and touch the red. There are only two interpretations. Either he has not grasped or he doesn't care. Both are dangerous. If he has not grasped, I will be able to correlate with other, other observations of mine and say his grasp is slow, his intellect is slow. But if I see that he is grasped, but he has not bothered to follow it, even more dangerous. Right? So, make it a point to adhere to social norms. Make it a point to adhere to law. Make it a point, that should be your way of life. How to inculcate this in a daily life? That's what people ask me, people ask every time. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Your conscience, you know, every time you do a wrong thing, let me tell you this. Every time you do a wrong thing, your conscience will prick you. And if your conscience doesn't prick you, it means you're a hardcore, you know, offender. 
but which we are not. 99% of us are not. Our conscious knows what is right. And every time you do wrong, the conscience will tell you. When you bunk the class, you know, there are so many ways that you also will unravel this. You know, you while chatting very friendly, nicely in a good environment with them, you can tell if you come to a class of many times and you went for a movie. And you know, I I smoked the first time in my ten and I smoke even now. I drink, I go for what is it? You are a student. And you smoke and drink at your parents' cost. Right? And please understand the person who is interviewing you sitting across the table is a fatherly figure. Obviously, he is not going to like it. And why should he not like it? I mean, in the sense, is it right? First of all, the question is, is it right? All those who have smoked for the first time when you were very young, I am sure you will, you will agree with me. That somewhere your conscience told you, hey, this is not right. But at the same time, your mind must have said, hey, it does not matter, let us experiment and see how it feels. So the mind took over and you indulged and slowly it became your habit. It means what? It means your value system is not very strong. Right? So inculcate this. Make it a daily life practice. Shed your bad, bad habits. Become a righteous person. Follow the rules, be it on the street, be it at home. You know, there's a very simple thing, you know, what, what responsibilities do you share in the household? You know, one of the questions, part of the same. And the guy says, I mean, either he doesn't respond to this question, he forgets it, or he says, I mean, he, he contributes very little for the, for the family that he stays in and he lives in, he eats in, he contributes very little. You are your routine from morning to night, what do you do? How do you spend a normal working day, a normal you know, a weekend? That reflects your sense of responsibility. How responsible are you for yourself? The way you come dressed shows your responsibility. The way you participate in the activities shows your responsibility. Right? So be responsible, be life. Understand why you have come here. What is your purpose? Right? And behave accordingly. Well, guys, now let us come to the third OIQ of factor two, which is cooperation. I mean, I'm sure all of you understand the meaning of cooperation, right? It is basically a relationship of give and take. A belief in a candidate that we have to Seek help when we need and give help when others need. But it is again unfortunate that from the early upbringing, sometimes some candidates, they, they believe that there are two sets of candidates, right? One believe that taking help or seeking help is their birthright, right? And when it comes to giving, they shy away. And there are other kind of candidates who keep on giving and when they seek, nobody helps. But, you know, both these situations are not good. And it is unfortunate that our society growingly is becoming like this. This is not good. It does not help. And particularly when we live in a social group, when we live in a community, when we live in, you know, in a group of friends and when you come to the different services, when you live as a family, play as a family and fight as a family, somebody who is not cooperative can be dangerous, right? And I'm sure many of you have watched movies where uh, the, the uh, you know, one of the buddies acted differently and did not cooperate at the last time, at the last moment, and which led to the death of others. This is unfortunate. This is this is not acceptable. 
So a candidate who comes to the SSP, what we see is whether he is willing to seek and give help free. Right? Nobody is strong enough individually. See, no finger of our hand is strong enough individually. But when you when you when you fold all the five fingers, you know it becomes a punch. You take you know you take uh, you know uh, pieces of stick. Individually they break. But when you bind them together, the ten twelve of them and try and break it, it's not break. You tear a piece of newspaper and keep on adding them and try keeping try try tearing them again. After a certain stage, you will not be able to tear. It is the strength of the collective group that matters, and it is, it is not the strength of the individual that matters. So cooperation is about collectiveness. Cooperation is about staying together, fighting together, partying together, working together, living together, and develop that bond harmony, which today in the civil society. Very unfortunate to see, very rare. Or there are many cases where it is taught: don't share, don't give, don't do this, don't do that. You know? But when you need a help, go and ask for him. Don't get it from him. Go and do this. Go and do that. Very unfortunate part of it. So how does this get translated into assessment in the three techniques? Very easy. Extremely easy. Right? This is something that will come out very, very clearly in the interviewing technique, in the psychological technique, as well as in the group testing. When it comes to the interviewing technique, it's very, very easy to decipher this. There are several questions to check this. How do you react in a situation where your friends, colleagues, or your uh, unknown persons? For when there is an accident, what do you do? If you are a cooperative person, if you if you feel the need to help others, you go immediately and do whatever. Whether your actions are logical or not is a separate aspect. But the very fact that you went ahead and you know you try to help somebody, it gets you know it gets proved. There may be situations given to you during the interview. It will get proved. You may be asked. Many, many, many questions related to this, and that's why I keep saying, understand the well cues. The moment you get the question, you should know where it is pointing towards, and do not fake the answer. You may fake the answer once, you may fake the answer twice, but you may not be able to fake every question, right? So you need to inculcate this as your habit. Similar, you know, there are so many situations in the SRT. Whether you cooperate, whether you extend your helping hand, whether you seek help when required, right? It will get it easily get reduced. And the GTO technique, I'm saying you, I'm telling you again and again, there are nine different texts. And six of them are group tests. How you conduct yourself, how you behave yourself. Take an example of one of the tests in the GTO, say the GOR, group obstacle race. Right? Now you will find there are guys who are hefty, not able to do all the obstacles. Do you help them? There are some guys who may get stuck on the wall, not able to jump down. There are some guys who may not be able to jump up and climb up the wall. How do you react? Are you a passive spectator? Are you the one who goes forward and, and you know help him to climb up? Are you the one who just take the help of others, climb up the wall and get down quickly and forget it? Or you stay on top to help others? There are so many subtle clues that you all give in every group task. Say for the example of the GT. You are sitting and discussing, somebody is speaking and you butt him. You don't allow him to speak. And let him finish, where is the hurry? Though it is said, 
the GTO, uh, the GTO will tell you in advance that the, G, that the GTO will last over 20 odd minutes. Well, let me tell you if there are interesting points coming up, somebody is speaking and somebody is saying something, you are never going to cut it. You will listen. Right? Worse is a candidate who has not been able to speak much, but he is attempting, he is trying to speak and you don't allow him to speak. You cut him also and put a cross upon him. What does that show? That shows pure selfishness. Are this guy has not spoken in months. He is making an effort, though he is not getting an opportunity. Give him an opportunity. At the same time, don't try to become artificial. Somebody who is just not speaking, sitting quite tight, and you say suddenly, You have not heard anything from chest number 5. Let us give him an opportunity, and you are asking chest number 5 to speak. Unfortunately, the candidate is not prepared, is not. Confident is not wanting to speak and you are unnecessarily poking. So this is unnatural behavior. If somebody is speaking, allow him to speak. Wait, where is the, where is the hurry? Let him finish, put a glass in front of him. Right? So there are many, many ways. There are many, many ways. You know, in group obstacle, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, group planning exercise, right? We are given certain resources, some are obvious and some are hidden or some, some you can presume. If you are standing on the road and you are facing with a problem, you want to send somebody using a vehicle, you can presume that there are going to be other vehicles, but most candidates will not want to stop a vehicle and request him and take help. I don't know why. And when this happens in Afpa, I ask them, why, can't, why couldn't you take help from the passing by vehicle? And the answer most often I get is, so why would he stop for my problem? And I tell them, that's because you don't stop when others are facing problem. When you don't stop, you believe that others won't stop. Hence you don't seek. Neither you give help nor you seek help. This is my interpretation. And I keep telling them this. Right? There is a situation in front of you, show your hand, stop the vehicle, request him, convince him, ability to influence, convince, right? Convince him. You know, solve the situation by taking help. At the same time, you help when there is a situation. GP is all about that, isn't it? Okay. So this is getting tested in the Abstract task is getting tested in the practical task. Right? In the group task, like I said, PGT, HGT, command task, individual, uh, GOR, and the final group task. Right? It is get tested. How you conduct yourself, how you help each other. And if you don't have that, please understand, if you have seen the movie, Kesari, uh, Kesari, I, I believe it is Kesari, right? And you must see the climax of this movie. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It shows camaraderie. It shows responsibility. It shows cooperation. You see how each one of them complement the other. How each one of them, you know, work as one unit. And a few sick soldiers created devastation to the enemies, right? So that is the kind of candidate we are looking at. Like I said, these are innate qualities. These are qualities that we integrate through our genetics and heredity. And more importantly, these are qualities we inculcate through our early childhood upbringing. But if you understand the crux of what the armed forces require, and if you understand that these are the right values of life, and if you understand that this is what I need to be as a human being, if you are conscious of this, and you decide to be like that, you will get thousands of opportunity every day to inculcate this. Just be nice to everybody. Greet everybody. Don't have biases.
I am repeating, I am summarizing this now, most important part of this brother. Be nice to people, be friendly and do not develop any biases for any caste, creed or community. Defense Forces is the only organization which is truly secular. This is what has been my experience. After seeing both sides, the services and the civilian world. Be responsible. Understand your duty. And do your duty. Do your duty as a student. Work hard, study hard. Do your duty as a soldier if you are a serving candidate. Do your duty if you are an employee in a company. And be sincere to yourself and do not violate rules and regulations. I know it is very easy to violate, in a, you know, violate the rule. It gives you a kick. It is a simpler way of life. The difficult way is to follow the truth, the righteousness. But that is what is the truth. And that is what is right. And be cooperative. Help each other. Extend your helping hand whenever you see somebody who needs help. And I am telling you, whether he, whether the other person reciprocates or not, all the positive deeds that you do will come back to you at some stage of the earth. Believe in this. Our scriptures, the Indian ethos, the value systems of the Indian culture is supreme, is great. And the armed forces is the only service in the nation which tests you for this, selects you for this and allows you to grow based on these fundamentals. Nothing else matters more than this. And uh, friends, I hope you learn a lot and enjoy the second webinar. And I'll come back to you again in the third webinar the next Sunday. And it will be on the fourth factor of the OIQs, which is about social effectiveness. And I shall correlate a lot of things which you may not have heard before. You may not have read before. But that is how I understand these OIQs. That is how I understood it long time back when I went to the SRP. One FAQ that came along, like the last time I mentioned about a book that I read when I was a young boy of your age going for the SSB and a lot of candidates who watched my webinar wanted to know which is that book. It is very unfortunate that that book is not in circulation. But let me tell you, whatever I am talking today and whatever I have written in my book, whatever I have made in the, uh, the 21 hour video, uh, tutorial or the video product for the defense aspect and what I teach in AFPA. It's all inspired from that book and my commanding officer of the NCC unit of which I was a part of, Major Sahi who is no more and what he taught me when I was a young boy of about 17 years old. So all this is inspired by these great authors then and the people with whom I could, I was fortunate to get an opportunity to interact and learn from them. It's all inspired by that, coupled with my own experience in this field for so many years now. Let's see again next Sunday, same time. God bless. If you have any queries, any questions, please write your queries. I may take a little time. But I will definitely try and respond in some medium or the other. I am sure you will appreciate today there are about 70-80 thousand aspirants in the country whom I am trying to support, who are following me. So I might sometime miss your question, I might uh, take a little more time to respond to the questions. But have patience, I will try my best to be with you, guide you, help you. Thank you. Jai Hind.